time. Come on and clap your hands as you take your seats in the house of the Lord. It's good to be alive on a Sunday morning. God has blessed us yet once again to be able to gather in this sacred space that we call sanctuary. And uh, it's so good to see each and every one of you in God's house for worship on this Sunday morning, the second Sunday of April 2024. As God has allowed us all to be able to gather together. For those of you that are in person worship, as well as our online worship family, we thank God for them. Come on, let's make some noise for those who are in the cyber sanctuary on this Sunday morning. How good it is that we all are gathered together together once again. Well, we pray that uh, all of our students had a wonderful spring break and now that they're back in action. And parents, you can have them as guardians. They've emptied, emptied the nest out. So uh, we'll be back on regular rotation of everything. Uh, everyone, I don't see anybody with any uh, eye sunglasses on, so nobody looked directly at the sun on Monday for the eclipse. So I guess everybody made it safely through that. Uh, we're good to be able to uh, assemble yet once again. A couple of quick announcements we want to share with you before we proceed uh, with our worship and the word. Uh, our people will come and lead us in our giving, and then we'll go forth in the word of God on this Sunday morning. First and foremost, I want to express my gratitude and thank you uh, to those who solicited gave your prayers and some who actually accompanied with your presence. Uh, we were in revival on Monday night in the big town of Orangeburg, South Carolina. We went all the way down to Orangeburg there and thanked those that rode and drove us to allow us to be able to minister there at the St. Paul Baptist Church uh, in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Reverend Chauncey Priester is the pastor. He had a wonderful time in the Lord. Some of you even said, hey, Pastor, I was tuned in. I saw it on Facebook. Uh, thank you for that word. So we thank each and every one of you for your support and your prayers and your uh, presence on this past week. Uh, our men are practicing. They're going strong and they're they're getting ready to make their debut very soon, very soon, very soon. I was actually thinking this morning, uh, getting ready to get going about. I might not tell y'all what Sunday they're gonna start singing. Y'all just might have to just uh, just to come. You know, but but they can't hold it themselves, so I already know. <laughs> One of you, a couple of them, they will tell me everybody. But uh, but uh, but they are they are sounding wonderfully. We're looking forward to them leading us in worship very very soon as we are uh, uncovering uh, gifts that might not necessarily been hidden but dormant uh, within our church congregation. We're excited to what this will avail for us. So we're excited. We're excited about that. So they're reminded of their practice this week as well as our praise team ministry. Then Wednesdays is always a great time for us to come together for Wednesday in the Word. Somebody said, I'm always learning something. And I, I'm, I'm grateful when we have that compliment. Um, and that you have confidence that you can come and gather in with us. Um, we were in attendance at the Men of Color Summit on uh, the last couple of on Friday, and uh, one of our members, or one of our faithful attendees was there. She said, I had to create a whole folder on my iPhone uh, for Wednesday in the Word. She said, it, after that first one, I dropped it. I was like, ooh, this is good right here. So, listen, 6.45 until 8 o'clock p.m., we are diving and engaging into the Word of God, and we want you to be here to be a part of that. The last couple of weeks, We've just done an open round table, so to speak. Uh, I call it reverse Bible study. Where you've given questions. And so uh, we've dealt with all types of things from uh, the difference in communion and the Lord's Supper, uh, to transubstantiation, consubstantiation, all kinds of stuff. Y'all like, what the word is you? That's why you come to Wednesday in the Word. Listen. So uh, we're having a wonderful time. Uh, I think there are a couple of questions that lingered over that we're going to try to deal with on this coming Wednesday. So if you have some questions on theology or orthodoxy or the church or the Bible, barbershop or beauty shop talk, uh, round the water cooler questions that have come up because everybody these days is a philosopher and a theologian. Uh, so please bring them, bring them so that we can uh, try to give commentary, understanding, and clarity on that which uh, may have poked your curiosity. We're looking forward to Wednesday and the Word this coming Wednesday from 645 to 7 to 8 o'clock right here uh, in person as well as on Zoom. So we're glad about that. I want to thank you 
one church, you all are continuing to register and register and register for our 2024 Full Gospel Live Full Conference. Uh, those numbers are going up. I believe we have about 40 plus or so, I think, yeah, that have registered. Uh, yeah, 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 one church is represented about 40 plus registrations or so, and so we thank God for you. It's going to be a great time in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, there's still some space on the bus. You can still get in. You can still get in. Um, but we want you to be there with us as we celebrate what the Lord is doing um, as we will uh, gather as a full gospel family uh, from, from, the, from all across this nation, from even Canada, from the Bahamas, uh, even from South America. We're going to gather in New Orleans, Louisiana. For the 9th through the 11th is the conference. If you're riding the bus, you're going to depart on that Monday, uh, the 8th, and you'll return on that Friday, the 12th, as the conference is Tuesday through Thursday. And it's shaping to be a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord. We had our preparation meeting, a preparation meeting for our consecration on that Thursday, and uh, we're excited. Uh, Bishop Paul, our founder, Bishop Paul S. Morton, will be the consecration uh, speaker. Uh, our Bishop of Worship and Archbishop William Murphy III is going to lead the music department and praise and worship and everything on our consecration service. And as well as we are told that very shortly, very shortly, maybe this or next week, we'll have the details for those who might want to sing and be a part of the recording. This is a recording year. And the uh, Super Mass Choir is coming back as well as if you want to play for my musicians or dancers. Hey, yeah, that's right. That's right. So every aspect of worship and arts is being availed for mass participation. And we're excited to be able to share all of that information to you as soon as it comes fresh off the presses down the pipeline so that you can know what you need to do to avail yourself to sign up and be a part of that. And I want to make sure that you remember to check the website for all the latest and updated information. And uh, if you're riding the bus, you're reminded of those checkpoint dates, the third Sunday of every month. Uh, if you're breaking up your payments, uh, we'll make sure that you are fully paid up by the end of next month. Uh, so if you're doing, if you did your 50 deposit, uh, you did your 50 last month, you did your 50 this month, and then next month you'll end with the 40, which will get you to that 190 total to ride the bus. And so... Tickets, is, uh, uh, airplane tickets, airline tickets are up there twice or three times as much. So come on, jump in, get in, and we'll be glad to be glad for all of us to worship the Lord together in New Orleans. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, that's all we got. Uh, thank you for being patient with us as we share those announcements with you. All of you look like family. We thank you for being a part of God's family. But we understand it may be your first time here at One Church in our worship experience. You don't have to stand up and say anything, but we do want to see who you are and acknowledge your presence in this place. So if we have any first-timers in the house, do us a favor and wave your hand, raise your hand so we can see you. We see you, we see you, we see you, we see you, we see you. We see you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. To all of you, our first time was on the day. We thank God for you. And to those who invited you, if you had a personal invitation, or if you just popped and found us somewhere and just came, we thank God for you. If you're watching online for the first time, do us a favor and say hello in the chat section or do the wave your hand emoji, and we'll respond to that. We would love the opportunity to express our appreciation for your presence here today, not just on today, but throughout this week, because we can just tell you we're grateful for you coming and asking how we can pray for you. So if you don't mind sharing your contact information, do us a favor and text the word hello. Yeah, we'll let you use your phone at one church. You can text the word hello, H-E-L-L-O, to 864-319-3190. Text hello to 864-319-3190. When you do that, this is what's going to happen so you can be expected. A reply prompt is going to come somewhere between three to five seconds or so if the system is running right. Um, and it's just going to ask you to share your contact information. You'll click on a link. It's going to ask you for a couple of things, your name, email address, and phone number, so that we can send you an email, tell you thank you for being a part of our service. We can see
send you a text message just to let you know we are personally appreciate you and ask you how can we pray for you and do you want to know any more information about us. It's just that simple. We're not going to hound you. We ain't going to uh, sell your information on that stuff. We take it very seriously that you have shared that with us. And so we hold in the confidence and pride. And so if you don't mind just sharing your contact information with us, we'll be so thankful and grateful just to express and share our sentiments of appreciation with you throughout this week. One church, come on, let's make some noise for our first timers. It's your first, but we pray it won't be your last. Here at One Church, we're a loving, vibrant, life-giving church committed to bring all into God, all into oneness with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We believe you shouldn't do life alone, and we don't just like to say the love. We like to show the love and share the love. So in One Church, you know what time it is. Get up on your feet. Get up out of your seat. Meet somebody. Greet somebody. Let them know that Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you, and it's so, so easy. So April, all the April babies, make some noise. All right. 
right, all right, all right, all right. Look at y'all, look at y'all. Look at y'all. I'm showing up now. Yeah. Yeah, all right, all right. That's it. You, you, you born in April, that means you are, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I ain't worried about all that. I'm talking about when y'all, when y'all, when y'all parents was feeling snuggly. Is that summer? This 4th of July? That's right. Is y'all? That's what it was. These 4th of July cookouts got y'all. <laughs> y'all ain't think about that, did you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You born in April. That's the 4th of July cookouts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure enough. Frankie Beverly and all them stuff was playing. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but to January, February, and March birthdays, those one in the first quarter, Sister Cindy Miller is just going to come and just uh, acknowledge you by name that you decided to uh, to give a little something more and then just give the overall total of what those birthday gifts uh, resulted in on the day. Amen. Come on, Sister Miller. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to thank everyone who gave for the month of January, February, and March. I would like to thank Bishop Elect Buford, First Lady Buford, Riven Williams, Paul Ashmore Jr., Raven Appenhammer, Carvette Arterbridge, in memory of her daughter, Leander Nash, Briasia Bowen. Rhonda Simmons, Shanique Lawrence, Geraldine Ladd, Miriam Fuster, Brianna Bowen, Ted Anderson, Chetney Simpson, Doretha Sanders, and Nia Arterbridge. This money will go to the building fund, and we had a total of $612. Thank you, and happy birthday. Amen. And first quarter birthdays, thank God for you. Now, as we prepare to give, we remind those birthdays of April that you can certainly give on the Sunday as well as the rest of you. Uh, we know that uh, as some of you who have been rocking with us for the beginning, since 2017, that whenever uh, we run into tension times, it's always God making sure we don't get too comfortable where we are and preparing us for where he has for us to go. So uh, as we've had roof issues that I believe are now on the resolution side, well, on the downside, our landlord has been able to get that resolved and just those other things. We just are believing God for that full space that we can own and control and be able to do what we need to do as so see fit. So we thank God for your giving. We thank God for your faithfulness. And we thank God for uh, you seeing that this is a good place to sow. Your seeds, it is good soul. Uh, Deacon Charles Stokes is going to come now and lead us in our offertory appeal. Y'all already know how he's going to lead it off and what he's going to say. You know it's going to be something he's going to say that's going to be funny today. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he got you. You flipped it. There it is. You test it. There it is. Come on, Deacon Stokes. <laughs> let, let us know what time it is. What? <laughs> Thank Pastor gonna say it at all. But with that being said, what time is it? What time is it? Yes, sir. Giving time. And we make it so easy and simple for you. We got five five ways to give. Let me get this mic up for us here. We got five, five ways to give. And we're gonna start out with the Tyler app. And it should be right behind. All you have to do is go to your Apple or Android phone and pull up the Tyler app, and you'll be prompt back to easy ways of how to give. Now, for your, for all y'all that's at home, there's another easy way to give. You can go to your mailbox. You don't have to go to the post office. All you have to do is make that check out to one church, P.O. Box 789. East of South Carolina, 29641. Make that check out. Go outside, put it in the mailbox. And in case y'all don't know, just let the flag up. The mailman know what to do. <laughs> See, I was, I was old before I found out what that flag was for. Now, I, I was 45 years old before I knew what that flag was for. <laughs> Which was about 
four or five years ago. Yeah, about four or five years ago. <laughs> and now, here's another way you can give. Now, y'all love this here, because I was late in life, so I learned how to text, too. Yeah, like Pastor Dale earlier. You. you can pull your phones out right here at one church week. We, we, we're not going to bother you. You can text the word give, G-I-V-E, to 864-990-1306. Y'all thought I forgot. Y'all thought I forgot, didn't you? 864-990-1306. In the same way with the time app, you'll be pumped right back for the mission, the easiest way to give. And uh, you can also give. Thank you. I, I forgot that one. Yeah, I forgot. We got a website. You know, we we still climb behind that. We, we on the tractor. <laughs> we still climb behind that. We got on the tractor. Yeah, we got a website. www.onesc.online. That's, that's a lot of levels there. I better give it again. www.onesc.online. And the last way to give is right here in the house. Yeah, look at that. That comes the lovely Miss Allison. She's coming down. And all you have to do is just walk down and drop it in the box. <laughs> Let's go and thank God for these gifts, y'all. Did I give all five ways? Please stand. No disabled. Thank you, Heavenly Father, once again for uh, another day. Another beautiful day. A day which we never seen before. Another, a day we have never seen again. Thank you here, Lord, for getting us out here to your place of worship safely, where we can come and give our gifts and offerings, and they all would be used to help uplift your word, uplift your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Larry Bowen, you know the way. Lead them on down. Start from the back. Lead them on down. You and Ted Allen. Everyone from the back to the front, if you will, just walk around. If you're not giving this week, you can touch the basket. If you're giving electronically, you can touch it with your phone. Or if you're placing something in, you can do that as well. Amen. As we give to the Lord on the for y'all before we get into the sermon today, y'all. How many of y'all know God got a blessing for you? And your name is on that blessing and it's waiting to happen. We want you to join us one last time while we do God's got a blessing. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're gonna make it. I'm gonna see you through. Hold your head up and smile on your face. This is the kind of day. It's not a show of hands. You're ready. Down inside. 
Anderson's Message Bible translates it into English words like this. Luke chapter 24, verse 46, 47, and 48. The Word of God reads accordingly. He said, talking about Jesus, You can see now how it is written that the Messiah suffers, rises from the dead on the third day, and then a total life change through the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed in his name to all nations, starting from here, from Jerusalem. You're the first to hear it and see it. You're the witnesses. What comes next is very important. I'm sending with my father, I'm sending what my father promised to you, so stay here in the city until he arrives, until you're equipped with power from on high. The New Living Translation says it like this. And he says, talking about Jesus, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. Here it is. There is forgiveness of sin for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. And the church said, Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, for the time that is ours to share together from this small portion of God's powerful printed word, I want to preach and teach the Spirit of God may govern and guide with this thought in our minds. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Let's pray prior to preaching. God, we love you. We thank you. We can do nothing without you. So now, God, we pray that you will speak from what you've already spoken, that we might hear you afresh and anew. Lord, we thank you that your ever-powerful work through your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary is full is fully effective and that it did everything it needed to do. So now give us what we need. Do what you want to do and desire to do. Uh, that we might grow because of this word. We love you, we thank you, we bless you. And I simply ask you to do it again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Forgive your self. Forgive your self. Jesus says, there is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. Uh, There's a total life change through the forgiveness of sins that's proclaimed to all the nations. We want to look and lean in on that topic, forgive yourself. We solicit your prayers on this Sunday morning. My brothers and sisters, uh, the work of Jesus on the cross is a complete work. Let the church say complete work. It is a complete, it's an all-encompassing, it's a work that needs not editing nor revision. It's a work that in its totality did everything that it was intended to do. He left no stone unturned, he left no sin unforgiven, he left no person excluded. The work of Jesus on the cross through his crucifixion, which thereby is automatically connected to his resurrection, is a complete work. Let the church say complete work. That this work of Jesus, this activity of the Almighty, this uh, masterful, um, um, merciless, and selflessness of our Savior was done in such a way that God included and had encompassed all of humanity when he decided to send his Son to die for our sins. And when we look at the text here in Luke chapter number 24, we see Jesus talking, ministering, helping his disciples to now understand this new life that they had received as a result of them believing in him and uh, and acknowledging the work that he had done, that complete work of his crucifixion on the cross, which was thereby automatically connected to his resurrection from the grave. Here it is. Let me lay it to you like this. When we say we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that you cannot believe in a 
partial work of God, which would thereby only be a partial work of grace. But our belief in God through Jesus Christ must connect the crucifixion on Friday with the resurrection on Sunday so that together we have the complete work of Christ which doesn't just forgive sins on Friday, but it also gives new life through the resurrection on Sunday. And part of our theology that has that many of us have struggled with, my brothers and sisters, is that while we fully receive his forgiveness of our sins, and while we fully receive the forgiveness of sins because Jesus died for us on the cross on Friday, some of us have struggled with walking in the new life that comes with the resurrection on Sunday morning. And this morning, I just want to lean in on the Sunday morning grace that comes from us learning and leaning and following God. Because one of the graces that God gives and the mercy that he, that he dispenses and dispatches is the forgiveness of sins to all who accept, to all who the Bible says repent, which is really just acknowledge, adjust, and advance. To all who repent, he forgives the sin. He gives forgiveness to those who walk in the steps or the stages to be forgiven. But forgiveness, my brothers and sisters, is not just an external activity that we are to engage to others who have done us wrong. Forgiveness is also an internal action that we sometimes have to engage to ourselves to allow us to move past the wrong that we feel we have inflicted on our own being. And I I want to talk to somebody this morning whom you are trying to turn a new page, trying to engage in a new season, trying to move forth with new grace, but it doesn't seem like you can get the car out of second gear. No matter how hard you put your foot on the gas, it's revving, but it ain't going nowhere. You're trying to move like God has called you to move, but it seems like you're a little sluggish and you're a little slow and things aren't advancing like you hope things aren't going forth like you you hope, could it be that while you have forgiven all of those who have done something to you, you have yet to forgive yourself for the things that you have done, and so you have become a limit on yourself to where the Lord is trying to lead you. Simply, my sermon in a nutshell, I want us to learn to forgive ourselves. Forgive yourself so that you can walk in the new life that comes from loving and living the Lord. Let me... Let me post my claim by the scripture that has been presented to you. Jesus is talking with his disciples. And at this point in time, y'all know we've already set the scene on previous sermons, how he showed himself to them. We looked at the Johannine text. We looked at John. And in John, they were locked in the room, and Jesus just stepped on the scene. He steps on the scene first on that Sunday evening after he had resurrected. He got up out of the grave. And then again, eight days later, when uh, when Thomas was there, he stepped on the scene again. He had also seen them when they were on the seashore uh, after they had been fishing all night comes in. Jesus has prepared a meal for them as he asked them if they have any fish. Jesus had shown himself to his disciples. And now in the Luke text, chapter 24, Jesus is meeting with them. He's talking with them and he's uh, enabling them to walk in a new life that comes from understanding who he is. And he talks about his work on the cross. He says that scriptures had told of long ago of what I just did a few days ago, that I must suffer, I must be crucified, but in that crucifixion and that resurrection comes something marvelous and miraculous that our mighty God has decided to give this bits and disperse dispatch to the masses, and that is the forgiveness of sins. But catch this, Jesus had already given them forgiveness by allowing them to understand that their mistakes from walking away from him as the master had been forgiven, as he showed up on the scene and said, peace be still, I'm here, You, it's, it's going to be all right. But he also had to let them know, you need to learn to forgive yourself for what you've done if you're going to fully live in the fullness of the life that God has given to you. Now, 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 whether or not you ascribe to the to the principles and the precepts set by 
psychology on, on the steps of forgiveness, whether you ascribe to for the four stages or the five cycles or the three levels, depending on what, uh, what circle uh, of psychological thought you're going to dip your toe in the water of. All of them encompass really what I like to call three primary steps of principles that I want to present to you for us to understand how God needs us to engage in self-forgiveness so that we can fully receive his grace and anointing for the assignment and, and for the assignment that he's placed upon our life and to align ourselves with his will, his way uh, to, to get on the path that he has prepared for us to get to a brighter and a better future. The first thing we have to do if we're going to learn to forgive ourselves, my brothers and sisters, here it is, the step of forgiveness, and that is number one, accept and acknowledge. We must learn to accept and acknowledge. Um, yeah, that's easy when it comes to something that someone has done to you. But it's a whole other thing when it comes to what you've done to yourself. <laughs> um, and the first step in forgiveness is acceptance and acknowledgement. Now, accept the fact that you did make a mistake so that you can thereby move on from the mistake. Let me go ahead for my note takers and just give you the three points so that you can fill in how you need to write in. So point number one is acceptance and acknowledgement. That, that's, that's how you begin to accept. Point number two is after you've accepted and acknowledged, you learn to make the adjustment so that then, point number three, you can proceed in advancement. Uh-huh, uh, there, there, there it is, there it is, there it is. Let, 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 me, let me go ahead and just front load it all out for you, and then we'll fill in, we'll fill in the bank. Let me, let, let me give you all the points and the dots on the, on, the, on the menu so then you can go to plot number one, two, three, four, five, six, and we paint the picture together at the end. We first must accept and acknowledge so that then we can adjust what we've accepted and acknowledged. So thereby, by the power of God, we can, point number three, advance and go forward in life. Really, I put it in those three principles, but all of those are encompassed in the words of Christ when he simply said, repent. <laughs> that really, that's the formula for repentance. Acknowledging what I've done, adjusting so I don't do it again, and then advancing not in the same direction, but in a different direction, so that I'm headed in the right direction. Talk to you what I'm trying to. That, 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 that really, here it is, repentance uh, from the spiritual standpoint aligns and flows and mirrors and matches and meshes what forgiveness is from the psychological standpoint because they both encompass the same three main things. Forgiveness, uh, just like repentance, is not doing a 360. A 360 is me turning around and being back at the same place, which means I'm looking at the same thing. But repentance and forgiveness is doing a 180 to adjust so that I leave what was hindering me behind me and I head in a a new direction. And some of us, the only way you can truly go to where God is trying to take you is if you fully engage in every aspect of self-forgiveness. Forgive yourself so that now you can live out the rest of your days as the best of your days that God has so given to you. We must, number one, accept our knowledge. Um, um, I know you don't want to deal with it, but you're going to have to deal with it if you're going to overcome it. Um, that, that, that there are some things that we have so compartmentalized within ourselves that to an extent you almost convince yourself it didn't happen. Somebody, somebody said earlier. Oh. You, 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 you've done so good to build your life and your engagement with others in a way that others won't know, that you try to pretend to yourself that it didn't happen. But 
but can I give you something? God can't heal what you're not willing to reveal. He can't clean up what you keep covering up. But you have to expose it so that he can deal with it and we all can move on from it. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Um, uh, Jesus, Jesus came to the fellows. They were locked in the room. And, and they had so set themselves up for failure that they were willing to try to live out the rest of their days in hiding. Not because Jesus just died, but because they had, they felt they allowed themselves to buy into something that they should have known better not to do. And Jesus showing up on the scene following his resurrection was more for them than it was for him because he had to let them know it's okay. Number one, you did not make a mistake. But number two, if you felt you did, you can still live on past it. Okay. Um, um, <laughs> um, the pretext and the pretense is that they were so scared of what waited them in the next that they had halted their life to a season of now. And they were so willing to stay stuck in the now that they were going to miss the greatness that God had for them in the next because they had compartmentalized their situation to in, in order to keep themselves protected from the hurt that they thought they would be handed if they stepped out and tried it to start all over again. But Jesus steps onto the scene and says, I got you. Just accept and acknowledge so that we can adjust and then we can advance. Accept the fact that you made a mistake by 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 uh, brutal by um by hurting yourself and feeling that you could not more go on any further. Accept the fact that yes, you have done some mis you have had some missteps and you have had some mistakes. Accept the fact that yes, some things work good and some things didn't work too good. Accept the fact that there have been some failures along with some wins. And when you accept it and forgive yourself from it, now you know how to adjust and thereby not make the same mistake twice so you can advance and be who God is calling you to be. Okay, okay, okay. Forgiveness, my brothers and sisters, for those of you who got on your Sunday's best and your Sunday hat when you came to church, is not just spiritual, but it's also psychological. I'm going to say that again. It's not just spiritual, but it's also psychological. Yes, it's some stuff that you can pray about, but God is not just a God of our hearts. He's also a God of our head. That, 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 that's why I love wisdom in the Word. You don't have to check your head at the door when you enter through the church. But God can deal with the complexities of our of our of our uh, um, uh, the complexities of our life and the questions that we have. God is not scared of your questions. God is not scared of your issues. God is not scared of your problems. If so, He wouldn't be God. But my God is so big that the difficulties that I'm having and dealing with in my mind that are messing with me when I'm trying to move forward, but something in my mind keeps pulling me back because I've not dealt with the forgiveness of myself to feel that I'm worthy enough to accept the new life that he's given me. He comes in and sets not just my heart in order, but my mind in order. Okay, I'm giving you too much beauty. Let me give you a Bible. Let this mind be in you. That's also in Jesus Christ. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Some of us, we got a good heart for things, but our mind keeps messing us up because we keep thinking and dwelling on stuff that we shouldn't have to dwell on. And God says, forgive yourself so that you can release yourself and think on something new. Okay, 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 okay. There's acknowledgement, there's acknowledgement, accepting that there's there's adjustment. Repentance, 
um, he says there's a total new life change that comes um, when we repent the forgiveness of sins through, through repentance. Adjusting, here it is, has to be connected to the acknowledgement and the acceptance. Because if I don't acknowledge and accept, then I don't know what to adjust. If, if I don't acknowledge and accept, I don't know what to adjust. Okay, all right, y'all, y'all, y'all remember that? Um, let's say I cook something. Y'all know I love to cook. If I cook something and it's salty, if I don't acknowledge and accept that it's salty, how do I know to adjust the amount of salt I put in there so I don't repeat again what I just did? If you don't acknowledge and accept that you got a lead foot and treat every and treat every and treat every uh, 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 <laughs> y'all listen. If you don't acknowledge you got a lead foot and treat every speed sign like it's a suggestion, like like it's the minimum instead of the maximum. And you keep wondering why them blue lights always end up behind you. And you keep calling Rashad and say, hey, you got to hook up down there. Can you get me off this ticket? Can you help me out? I know you ain't over there no more. I know you in Clemson and not in Easy no more. But you still know somebody over there. They caught me doing 65 and a 35. And you, you burning up his credit with his good people. Because you, if you don't acknowledge and accept, then you don't understand. You need to adjust that foot up off the gas. If, 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 if we don't acknowledge and accept, then we don't know how to adjust. Um, and Jesus gives us this through the simple sentiment of repentance that um, from us, it's just in topic in the English word repentance, but there they understood that repentance really was not just a spiritual concept, but it was an actual uh, maneuvering of the change of activity that dealt not just with life, but also with the agricultural climate that they were in. So that they would know that it required an acknowledgement and an adjustment to advance. That it was the acceptance of what had been done. The adjustment to not do it again. So that we can therefore move in the advancement in the positive direction. Jesus, Jesus says, Jesus says, um, there's forgiveness for all who repent. That's New Living Translation. Um, but I love it here. He says that a total life change through the forgiveness of sin. Um, it's, it's a total life change because it affects your total life and everything in your life. Do you realize that the you of tomorrow needs the you of today? To get over what you did on yesterday so that you can live your fullest life. Oh, but when we don't acknowledge and accept, when we don't adjust, we don't adjust. And when we don't adjust, here it is point number three, we have difficulty advancing. The adjustment happens so that we can advance and go in the right place. That we cannot truly be all God wants us to be if we continue in the self-sabotaging tactic of unforgiveness towards self. Jesus came to give us a new life. And if we don't, if we won't release ourselves from the old life because we keep keeping ourselves hostage uh, due to unforgiveness of what we've done, then we'll never receive the new life. Did you hear what I said? He came to give us new life. But if you keep keeping yourself hostage in the old life, how are you ever going to walk 
in the new life, if you keep beating yourself up on the things that you did wrong, that you know you did wrong, but you don't forgive yourself so that you don't do it again, how can you enjoy the new life that God is giving, is trying to give us? I love it because he says a total life change. He came to give us a new life. Somebody said a new life. He, he, he comes to give us a new life. He comes to give us an upgrade, an up. He, he doesn't have to change the hardware. He just changed the software. Uh, some of us, you got phones, and every once in a while, your phone has to go in an update. The update happens because the manufacturer has realized that there's a new way for, a better way for it to operate. Come here, catch this. Usually, updates happen on our end because the manufacturer is putting out new products on their end. But since we don't always have to buy the newest product, it will allow us to still have the new his operating system because he's able to allow us, they're able to allow us to operate with the new, in the new while having the old. And God is better than Apple, Samsung, or any other manufacturer because he would never require you to have to completely get something new. He will allow you to change from the inside out. He'll download a new software while you still have the old hardware. And that's why some people struggle with forgiving you even after you have forgiven yourself because they still want to hold on to the you you used to be. But you have to let them know I'm not who I used to be. And whether you forgive me or not, I have forgiven myself. And now I'm walking in a new life. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but I really said all of this this morning to tell you it's time for you to get a new life. Tell somebody new life, new life, new life. I'm walking in a new life. I'm not going to hold myself hostage uh, but according to what I've done, but I'm going to have a new life. I've got a new walk and a new talk and a new attitude. I'm walking new. I'm living new. I'm, I'm going. I'm proceeding and progressing. I'm advancing in a new life. I've got a new outlook because i got a new life. I've got a new understanding. Because I've got a new life. I've got new perspective. I've got new zeal. I've got new strength. I've got new mercy. I've got new grace. I've got new love. I've got new compassion. I've got new patience. I'm walking in a new authority. I'm living under new peace. I'm having new joy. I got a new me because I'm engaging in new prayer and I'm giving new worship because I'm shouting a new praise. The Bible says all things have passed away and behold, all things become new. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but I come to free somebody today and tell you to forgive yourself. Acknowledge what happened. Adjust what happened. And advance what happened. Forgive yourself and accept it. Forgive yourself and acknowledge it. Forgive yourself and adjust from it. Forgive yourself and advance because and when you decide to accept your the rest of of your things, nothing nobody can say or do and hold against you with a because you have forgiven yourself. Tell somebody, I forgive me, I forgive me, I forgive. Adjusted and advance from it. Don't, 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 don't keep playing that broken record over and over and over again. Matter, matter, matter of fact, you got so good at it that you know the triggers that put you in that self sabotage, woe is me mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I'm talking. I know I'm talking. I know. I know I'm talking. That one song that I play, you hear on the radio, and your mind starts to wander all the way back. And you start thinking about what coulda, shoulda, woulda been. And you start getting sad. And why I had to do that? Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Forgive, 
forgive yourself. Okay? It happens. And? It happens. Okay. You got fired. Okay. And? You didn't finish school. And? Relationship didn't work out. And? Okay. Stuff got a little off. Money got a little tight. And?
connect with the Christian community. We believe there's no better place, no better church, no better Christian community and family to connect with than one church. So we invite and encourage you to come and we would love to say welcome home. Listen, if you're here today, if you're watching online, the Spirit of God is moving in your heart to accept Him. The Spirit of God is moving in your life to come and be baptized. Or the Spirit of God is moving for you to come and connect with one church. If you're online, just put that in the chat section and go to our website and hit the connect us. But if you're here in person, we would love to see you make that demonstration today. We're clapping our hands to let you know we're cheering for you. If if I'm reading your mail, if I'm all in your text inbox, if I'm in your DM. God is speaking to you, and he's saying, come on, take a step to me. I want you to do a favor. Come down the dial. Our deacons are here. They'll walk with you through the steps of the plan. And to pray, come on. Come on, we see you. 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 Today is a great day. Somebody, you just need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive yourself. You, you may be already, you might already be a member of one church. You already been baptized, but just say, listen, I'm going to make a step. I'm going to leave my old me in the past. And I'm going to get into something. Come on, come on. I see you, my sister. I see you, my sister. Come on, come on, come on. We're celebrating because the devil is playing together in this family. People are making the decision to, 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 connect and, to, to connect and commit themselves to God.
Lord. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate these things. We thank God for you and we pray that as God continues to speak to you and through you, He desires for you to become, and you know you are not walking this alone. These women have a church family that is going to stand by you and with you to love on you and to support you. Them lady came 
We didn't have church since then. I forgot that was like Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen. I, we, I had some congratulations goes to them, and uh, uh, we we celebrate them. That's the good thing about being uh, bishop elected overseer of the full state of South Carolina. I get to celebrate everybody. Amen. 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 So yeah, we we would we without a doubt was rooting for that dog Stacy. Listen, I'm telling y'all. Telling y'all, y'all might be next Sunday, but I was this close to preaching uncommon favor. I was, I was that close. Preachers everywhere was texting, Doc, you doing uncommon favor Sunday? So y'all go home and listen to the folks. You, you hear about 15, 15, 1100. That's mean a whole lot. If you hear a whole lot of uncommon favor service, listen, a lot of us was gonna do the gospel according to Don Stacy and talk about, talk about uncommon favor. I sure was working on one. But we took another turn. About this week, we thank God for for everyone, and congratulations to those Lady Gamecock and the goat that she is, uh, Don Staley Hall of Famer. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. Did you say baby? That's it. All right. Let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Father, thank you for how we've been able to gather and assemble in this place, in this space, as we now depart from this place, but never from your presence, disconnect from the platform and we're watching virtually, but never from your power. May your glory, uh, may your goodness, may your mercy, may your love, may your strength, may all of who you are be with us. Grace and the love of your son, Jesus Christ, and accompany us and forever uh, walk beside us. We might know that we are forever under the umbrella of your care. Hold us and keep us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen and amen. Have a good one. Go with God and God with you. Be blessed.